It's good to see everyone. Some new names, that's awesome. Great to see everyone. We'll get started here in just a few minutes. Right. All right, so we are gonna go ahead and get started with the program this evening. Uh, good evening, everyone, uh, and welcome to the Haitian American Museum of Chicago program, General Toussaint Louverture versus Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte. This program is a part of our scholar lecture series at the museum, where we invite community speakers to give presentations on different aspects of the Haitian uh, art, history, culture, and diaspora. My name is Carlos Bossard, and I'm the executive director at the museum. It is great to see you all. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hammock's mission is to promote Haitian art, culture, and history in metropolitan Chicago and surrounding communities nationally and internationally through advocacy, education, and supportive services. Education is at the core of our mission and we are glad to continue bringing insightful, meaningful, and impactful lectures and programs to the community. For today's program, our guest speaker, King Kevin Dorval, will compare and contrast the leadership styles of Toussaint Louverture and Napoleon Bonaparte. Now, before we begin, I would like to do some housekeeping and let you all know the format of tonight's event. First, this program is being recorded, and if you do not wish to be seen, feel free to turn off your video cameras. Also, all of you were automatically put on mute as you entered the room. Please remain on mute throughout the program to ensure everyone can hear the speaker clearly. Auto-generated captioning has been turned on for accessibility, and if you do need the transcript at the end of the program, please feel free to reach out and we'll make that available to you. After the presentation, there will be a Q&A session with Mr. Dorval, moderated by Hammock's educator and grant writer, Ben Henderson. Ben has been with the museum for over two years now and continues to be a huge asset, supporter, and friend of the museum. Ben. Hello everyone, my name is Ben Henderson and I'm the educator and grant writer at the museum. As Carl states, Q&A will take place after the presentation. However, feel free to put your questions in the chat during the pre presentation for Mr. Doravel uh, later on. During the Q&A, all questions must be answered, must be uh, made through the chat. I'll be monitoring questions throughout the program and relaying them to Mr. Doravel. Mr. Doravel is an African, African Haitian author, producer, activist, and head of a nonprofit called Courage to Believe International. His work primarily focuses on promoting educational opportunities for um, Black youths in the US and helping ha people in Haiti. This work has led him to develop a keen awareness of what communities need and have led him to work with numerous schools, churches, universities, and local organizations throughout Florida, Haiti, and London in order to reduce the school to prison pipeline for black youths. Everyone, please welcome Mr. Dolavel for today for this program. Hey everyone, how you doing? My name is King Kevin Dorba. Thank you so much for having me. Can you guys hear me loud and clear? I think so. I'm, I'm working with uh, one of our guests right now about the sound, but it sounds like everyone else can. Okay, perfect, perfect. Thanks for having me. Um, the Haitian American Museum of Chicago. Uh, thank you, Ms. Elsie and, and Carlos for allowing me to, to be here to share um, some history and knowledge that I have about General Toussaint Louverture and Emperor Napoleon. Um, so we're going to go through um, a few things. And also, when I share my screen, Carlos, um, will everyone automatically see it? That is correct. 
Okay, so um, so, so go ahead and get things rocking and rolling. Thumbs up. Uh, we are seeing a presenter mode, so we see uh, any notes and such. How about now? Yeah, we are still seeing the presenter mode. But I want to just share. Within the PowerPoint. Play from start, but you're seeing the presenter mode. But what I like for you to see is <laughs> um, the actual slide. You know what? Potentially on the top, you can hit swap, swap displays that may, uh, there we that? go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, yeah, I'm using like uh, three, four screens here, so uh, forgive me. So um, here we go. Now, moving along. All right, so today's agenda, we're going to uh, have a compare and contrast between the two military soldiers. Um, their personalities, their accomplishments, and legacy. So despite what, what you may have heard or read, you may find out something completely different. Um, so just hang on and, and uh, enjoy the ride, so to speak. Now, Haiti, as you all know, is a, a island um, in the Caribbean, and the French had colonized colonized the island um, due to the richness of the, the soil. The original name is Aiti. Um, it was once the Pearl of the Antilles. It outpaced all colonies combined, outpaced, outproduced, not just in the quality or the um, quality of the agriculture, but the quality of them, the, 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 the quantity and quality. Uh, Saint Domingue, um, which was the name after it was changed from IIT. It was the richest colony combined from all the colonies of the world, no matter if you were the 13 in, in the U what is now the US or the, the, the other Caribbean islands, all the French territories. And it also produced indigo, indigo, coffee. Um, Haiti is one of the few nations that grows mangoes um, nearly year, year round one of the few countries in the world that does that. It, as a matter of fact, it's one of the top exports, other than rice. Um, due to recent policy changes for various reasons, um, the Clinton Foundation, for one, there were some policies, they somehow they legally, um, somehow they made it legal to do illegal things in Haiti. And policies that impacted the rice agriculture, Haiti, was once upon a time were able to grow their own rice and make money off of it. But due to the Clintons, some of the policies Clintons did, Bill Clinton did in the 90s, uh, the price of rice is so high and they forced them to um, take the Clintons rice, uh, take rice from the, uh, Arkansas. Why would you do that when you could grow your own rice? But we're gonna go into how so many foreign interests were able to have the impact, not just on the agriculture, but the livelihood, um, the spirit of the Haitian people, which was the first country um, in the Western hemisphere and one of the first countries in the world to be able to gain their freedom um, from, from slavery. They were able to overcome slavery, overthrow the superpowers that were enslaving them. France, um, Spain, and, and Britain were all invading Haiti 
uh, France obviously colonized uh, colonized Haiti, and uh, the Haitians were able to get the independence um, from a, a, a battle that took place from 17, some people say 1790, due to the fact that this only wrote two song, a letter, thanks to Dr. St. Paul. Um, he was on, he was one of the professors on your show. Uh, he revealed to me a letter that um, Dessalines wrote to Toussaint saying that something had happened, um, some major happened in 1790. But the, the battle, nevertheless, the battle took place from 1790, 91 to about 1803, 1802. Um, it took like 12 years of, of war, not just war with external forces, but civil wars amongst um, the mulattoes, which we'll get into um, in, 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 in the presentation. So um, the mulattoes, then you have um, the French were constantly going back and forth, fighting um, General Toussaint, Jean-Jacques Dessalines, Emperor Jean-Jacques Dessalines, and King Henri Christophe, uh, which were three leaders that, um, if it was to, General Toussaint did not liberate Haiti by himself. He had uh, many talented men and women. Um, Suzanne Belair is, is, is one of the, the female soldiers that was able to uh, fight and um, assist in, in, in winning the independence, which was uh, very important to them. Um, moving along, I just wanted to kind of set the, the foundations for everything else I'm about to say. Um, General Toussaint. Now, General Toussaint had many different um, looks and faces. And I was asking myself, um, why is that there, there isn't any actual picture of Toussaint, right? And um, Napoleon, you're not gonna have that problem. You know, he, yeah, he may look a little diff, slightly different, but for the most part, he, Napoleon is painted as someone handsome and, and tall and, and powerful. Um, Toussaint, who was the leader of the Haitian Revolution, General, Toussaint Louverture was the leader of the um, Haitian Revolution, as I mentioned, um, but he doesn't have a, a beautiful portrait. As a matter of fact, if you look behind me, I don't know if you can see it pretty clear, this is a painting of, of Napoleon and I have a painting of, of Toussaint. Now, this painting here of Toussaint doesn't look like any of the ones that you see here on, on your screen. Um, but and so you have to ask yourself, why is that, right? So. I remember telling my cousin years ago that I don't believe Tucson actually existed. You know, his, his story, the, the, the history of him was, was too powerful. Um, I really didn't think he existed because I can't see a picture of him. Now here's why. <laughs> You're gonna have to wait <laughs> so for me to actually tell you. So just stay tuned for that. Um, but mo moving along, France decided to emancipate um, Haiti in 1794. And years later, Napoleon Bonaparte in 1802 will reinstate slavery, which was which was very interesting. Now, Toussaint was born uh, in the Homi, a Western Kingdom in in, in Africa. Uh, the Homi is now called Benin, Benin Africa. It was a warrior kingdom tribe that lasts about 11 dynasties. When I was in college, I did a big presentation on on the warrior kingdom. As a matter of fact. I started became, uh, becoming known as King Kevin because of this research. You know, I no longer wanted to, to see myself just as Kevin Dorval. Now it's King Kevin Dorval. Once I knew my history, which is very important, why history is very important. It, it helps self-esteem and confidence. Um, the, uh, Tucson was born May 20th, 1740. Some people say seven, 1740, actually. But here it says 1743 um, in Cap-Haitian, northern region of Haiti. Uh, he died in France after being kidnapped. Him and his wife and two kids were kidnapped by Gen General Leclerc, who was uh, Napoleon Bonaparte's uh, son-in-law. Yeah, son-in-law. He was a very capable um, soldier. He was able to trick Toussaint in getting uh, agreeing to talk with them regarding uh, peace negotiations. Um, because even though Nepo uh, Toussaint had retired after the revolution, he retired, agreed to retire, uh, but there was still an uh, insurrection going on in, in the island. And it was rumored that Toussaint was, was behind that. He had um, three kids, Isaac, um, Placid, and um, St. Jean. Isaac and, and, and Placid, Placid, Louventure, they both went to school in France and they were brought back from France 
so that um, they can be used as negotiation tools to trick Tucson into um, being arrested. Um, you know, of course, they didn't know that. And, but at that time, um, which I'm going get, to get into a little later, I'm going to explain that Tucson just wasn't a former slave that was, uh, you know, he, he eventually bought his freedom. Uh, he was also a very brilliant, uh, very shrewd, um, self-educated man. Um, the, a book by C.L.R. James called The Black Jacobins. I don't know if you guys ever, um, I'm sure many of you heard of it, um, and, and some of you may have even read it. Um, beautiful book. And it, 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 it answered a question that I had, a million-dollar question that, that I've had for many years um, regarding the great General Toussaint Louverture, um, which was, How much was he worth, right? How much was Tucson actually, you know, actually worth? What was his net worth? Um, when I was in college at FAU, Florida Atlantic University, I had a history of the Caribbean class. And there's and it's a book called The Brief History of the Caribbean by Jan Rojowski, I want to say is, uh, the, the person's name. Um, it mentions that, that, that Tucson was also doing business with um, Britain and also doing business with the U.S., um, which is the, uh, with the second president of the United States, uh, John Adams. You know, John Adams was actually doing business and, and trade with General Toussaint, and which I was mind blown by. I'm like, wow, you know, uh, United States president actually doing business um, with a, the man who overturned slavery, the, the business that is keeping the world turning, um, so to speak, at the time, with the uh, Atlantic slave trade where our African descendants were, were enslaved and um, a bunch of horrendous things happened to our ancestors. We all know that. I'm not gonna get into the details of that. But the fact that, you know, uh, you go from George Washington, John Adams, then Thomas Jefferson, um, George Washington, uh, Thomas Jefferson, the third president, they had, you know, between them, maybe 600 or more um, enslaved Africans. I don't call, um, my ancestors slaves, I call them the proper name, you would say with enslaved Africans because they weren't uh, put on this earth or born slaves, um, you know, outside of the, the plantation. So the proper name is enslaved Africans. But I was just mind blown by that, by that fact. Not only that, um, but I was very impre impressed by um, two songs that he wrote the constitution in 1801. You know, the, the, the Constitution of St. Domingo in 1801, which stated that all, everyone is born free. And the fact that he was able to uh, write that in the Constitution, he was a man ahead of his time, so to speak. So just as highly as I thought of, of, of Tucson, because all my life I learned about Napoleon. I'm going to get into that. But all my life since middle school and many of you all as well, you know, I'm born and raised in Fort Lauderdale and uh, since middle school. And, you know, I am uh, African Haitian, you know, born here. And my parents are from Haiti, Cap I was, um, all my life I heard about Napoleon from middle school to high school, you know. So he's, he's one of the characters that I actually was inspired by. I'm still inspired by. You know, I get into some, uh, you know, so, some more about him in, in a bit. But, um, but once I... Uh, learned about Tucson. I'm like, why, why am I learned? Why did I learn so much about Napoleon and nothing about General Tucson? And this man here's doing uh, a former slave, a former enslaved African is doing business with U.S. president. Do you guys understand how big that is? Uh, how, you know what I mean? And he wrote the constitution stating that all people born free, the second constitution written in the Western hemisphere after the United States declared their independence in 1776. So this is, this is a very significant. And the fact that I'm, I'm showing the many faces of Tucson right now, is just, you know, as, as I showed earlier, it just adds to the mystique of who he was. Now, uh, Tucson, uh, being someone who also learned how to read, he read Machiavelli in, in, in a book about um, Abernal. Abernal was a, was a French politician, a French philosopher um, that understood um, a lot about the, 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 the political climates that was going on in France. And he wrote about that one day, uh, someone would stand up for their people. And Tucson was like, why not me? You know, uh, you know, he read that. And reading Machiavelli, 
he read about um, political games and mind games, playing chess with people. So not having an actual picture of him, maybe it's something that he did on purpose. But I purposely believe the amount of money that he had, which was possibly anywhere from six million francs to 40 million francs. I'm going to get into that you know, shortly. Um, he had to have some sort of portrait of himself. So I truly believe Napoleon destroyed the, uh, the, the image of him to make sure that his story doesn't con you know, continue. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the was of St. Dominique in rich, uh, in rich France. Out of uh, France, about 1795, 1796, you're talking about a population of 25, 26 million people. Uh, out of these um, individuals, over uh, a million of them directly made money from the slave trade. France, outside of Britain, was the top enslavers of, of, of Africans um, coming into the New World. Now, in, in, in St. Dominique, which is today's Haiti, um, they worked 16 to 23 hour shifts, especially during the times of the, uh, the, the sugar canes were in season. Um, because, you know, to produce sugar, you have to work constantly around the clock almost, or the, the sugar is going to ferment, you know, it, it, it's going to spoil and it'd be no good. So it's around the clock, constant um, working, you, you, you're in the fields, you're getting cut by the sugar blades, the, the sugar cane blades, um, you know, ants is getting in there and, and you're sweating. I mean, it's very, very uh, a hideous work. You know, you wouldn't want to do that type of job, believe me, stay in school or start a business even. Um, that's what you'd rather be doing. Um, 800 Africans kidnapped, brought to St. Dominique um, by 1785, 87. Uh, roughly about 40,000 a year were being imported um, into St. Dominique. 40,000. Uh, 40, I mean, every other day that, because they work you to death. You could, your life expectancy was only two to three years in St. Dominique. That's how much of, um, you know, that's how hard they work. You know, you heard that term. Uh, work to death or work your fingers to the bone, they literally did that. And they were tortured a lot as well, which adds to the reason why they revolted. You know, people ask me all the time, you know, I make tons of videos on, on, on Haitian revolution. Why is it that the, the, re the revolution in Haiti succeeded um, and others did? It's because the, the, the level of atrocities in Haiti, um, you know, the, all this, you know, I'm going to, Later on the slide, you're going to see about 71 tons of sugar imported, you know, uh, was exported going to France. You know, it was a lot of money being produced. France was built on the sugar trade. So uh, money and greed brings, uh, you know, a lot of, I would say, sharks and, and, and killer bees, so to speak. You know, people were very um, lusting for money. And if it, if it took a million lives, then so be it. So every other... They, they didn't care if you died because it was to them um, it was cheaper to enslave and bring another African life to work in the fields of someone died. Um, extreme cruelty, the Lejeune case in 1788. Um, his name was Lickless, um Lejeune, and what he did was he actually tortured. He had 14 enslaved Africans on his plantation. This is a French guy, a wealthy French man, and he actually killed most of them out of the 14 because he believed they were plotting to poison him. Um, that went on a lot in the Haitian Revolution. So he killed uh, most of them. He kept three alive and, 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 and mutilated them, right? And left them in a barn to rot, you know, with pieces of their body missing. Um, so what happened was that uh, the, the neighboring plantation heard about it and they went and uh, filed, you know, charges against him. So he said, no, go ahead and check. And you know, I've done nothing wrong. They check his barn. They see the, the, the women in the back, you know, chopped up and mutilated, um, which is very graphic in the book. It explains in the C.R. James book, The Black Jacobins. Um, he talks about that. Uh, long story short, now he runs away. You know, the junior runs away. Um, the, the other, you know, when this gets so big that France hears about it, um, so the, 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 the Grand Blancs, which are called the um, Big Whites, this rich, uh, that's in Creole, Grand Blancs mean uh, Big Whites, 
uh, they decided that to make sure that he was found innocent because it would make it be bad for business people found guilty because other enslaved Africans would also try to um, press charges or you know to go to court and they didn't want that president. Um, so that's the type of situation that was going on in Haiti. Now Haiti doesn't get recognized until the Civil War, um, which 1865. Um, you know, many countries act like you know the Haitian Revolution didn't happen because it was unthinkable that. You know, former enslaved Africans will pick up machetes and, and sugar cane tools and whatever they have, rocks and, and whatever, to, to, to fight and they actually won. You know, they couldn't believe that. And then, you know, uh, Tucson goes and right, the Constitution 1801. That's very impressive. Now, Napoleon Bonaparte. Now, Napoleon Bonaparte was born in uh, 1769, August 15th. As a matter of fact, when he was born, uh, his father, and his country, Corsica. Corsica is an island outside of France. And believe it or not, you know, as you can see, Napoleon is not even French, which, you know, to my surprise, I thought he was French. All my life, I thought he was French. I'm sure he did too. But no, he's Corsican, uh, which is uh, descendants of, 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 of Italy. Now, his, his father and the country was fighting a war against the French the day he was born. They, he, he was literally born in the war. Um, he grew up extremely confident in himself. Uh, he grew up low middle class. Um, not, you know, he had noble bloodline, but he didn't have much money. His mom, I believe, had a, his mother had about uh, eight, eight children. And he attributes a lot of his, his confidence, his self-esteem um, towards, you know, the, the lessons he learned from his mom. You know, his mom was a very strict woman. Um, his dad, he called his dad a coward. Matter of fact, Napoleon never even liked his dad. He thought his dad was a traitor because his dad didn't finish the war with the revolutionaries in Corsica against the French. Now, at some point in time, Napoleon became racist. I don't know if he was always racist, but he definitely had an issue with black folks. He did not like black people. Um, I have several books on Napoleon, Life of Napoleon. I have um, the books here by James. He probably has a lot about Napoleon. In his book, um, part of I'll discuss later on. Part of my museum, we have books um, on many historical figures. So at some point in time, he learns these racist, um, racist thoughts. Um, his, he was educated. I'm not sure was it to become a soldier of fortune, but at some point in time, his mind is on money, lots of it. Um, so he begins to develop a taste once he once he gets educated in france he, he develops a he develops a taste um for for riches and power and position you know he grew up with somewhat poor and so once he had opportunity to prove himself that's what he did now france france went bankrupt france went bankrupt and they had what you call the french revolution when the the people who weren't benefit benefiting um that were the aristocrats they uh, revolted against the um, the government, which was a monarchy um, led by uh, King Louis the the sixteenth and Mary Antoinette, who's from uh, Austria. Matter of fact, King Louis and and Antoinette they got married as a peace treaty with Austria. Now, Aust Austria, Britain, they've always gone to war with France. You know, they're like they were like arch enemies. Now. The French Revolution is something that I found very interesting because of the, the, the amount of violence that was associated with it. Um, the French Revolution caught my attention when <laughs> they beheaded the king and queen. I was like, what? That is crazy. They literally beheaded the king, the king and queen. Um, king, king Louis, they, they uh, charged him with, with treason. And Antoinette, later on, they, they beheaded her because she was writing letters to Austria um, and they didn't want that, that you know, that's her family, but she was trying to, they believed she thought she was leaking information to them. As a matter of fact, during the French Revolution, King Louis and Antoinette snuck out middle of the night to try to leave Paris because I mentioned Paris of Versailles. Paris of Versailles um, was worth, worth, it cost two to $300 billion to build that palace. Um, definitely to look up the Paris of Versailles. And so the, the capital of France used to be in Paris, but they moved it to, to Versailles when, once the Paris of Versailles was built so that they could um, get away from the pressures of 
the um, you know being in the capital, everybody's in your face. So um, that was um, very very interesting. Um, in 1792, this image here that I'm showing you guys is reflects the massacre of um, Paris in 1792. Um, there they were uh, about a thousand. Uh, there was 300 suspects who were arrested. Um, the French Jacobins um, used terror as a way to cleanse humanity of what was regarded as moral corruption, which is the rich folks. So the poor is voted against the rich. Um, I'm sure you heard of that slogan that uh, when Marie Antoinette supposedly said, which there's no concrete evidence that she said this, um, when the people revolted, they were starving. France was literally starving. They were fighting for bread, breaking their houses, literally to steal flour so they can make bread. You know, and she told the people that um, let them eat cake. Um, the Queen Antoinette supposedly said that um, because, you know, she spent a lot of money. You know, she, she, she spent money lavishly. Um, so France was upside down uh, around this, this time, 1792. You may look, they may call it the, the, the massacre of September um, in France as well. Um, the 17,000 people were executed, 10,000 died in prison with not even with the trial. Um, there were massive drownings of, of, of people. Uh, France was definitely chaotic. This was, to, to paint a better picture for you, speaking of pictures, uh, this was like a purge. Have you ever seen the movie Purge? This is, that's how France was. And I was completely, completely thrown off guard when I found that out. Um, so France needed someone like Napoleon um, to get the country back in order because it was in complete disorder. And um, even 220 priests were um, executed during this, this time. This was definitely uh, a crazy time in France. So France, uh, France hired uh, the young Napoleon to go ahead and lead to, to, to stop the Persians who were interrupting the National Convention. And so what you see in this picture is the, uh, af after the, the massacres in France, um, things kind of got calmed down. Napoleon came into power and he was, the um, Prussia, was, was, Prussia was coming to invade France and, and um, he brought some cannons, cannons and guns. And um, he, this was, this was his chance to prove himself, you know, adversity, uh, brings the best out of you, right? So they hired him. He, he, he got some cannons, put cannons on top of the church, through the windows, um, lined up his men, and they literally, uh, <laughs> they literally obliterated everyone that was there. Um, this, this was, this was definitely a, a, a crazy situation. Now, uh, Napoleon, now he got promoted to commander of the interior and given commander of all of the army in, in Italy, 1,400 uh, royalists died and uh, the rest fled. He cleared the streets um, with the whiff of grape shot. This is why you see all these people falling on the ground. They call the, the, the bullets for the cannons grape shots. Okay, the French Revolution um, was a royalist insurrection that extinguished uh, the threat of the convention. And once Napoleon succeeded, now the world was his. Now he has the money and the power to, to, to actually manifest what he read about when he read about Alexander the Great and Hannibal and uh, different uh, warriors, warriors like that. Moving along here. Once France overcame the revolution, new laws came into place. Um, they had encouraged new industries were built, um, definitely around the slave trade. Pride and honor was brought back. Corsica was in war with France for independence, as I mentioned when he was born. Uh, France also allowed him to live out his goals and bring order, vision, um, building France back to the top, so to speak. Uh, gave him the power to raid and rob all of Europe. Uh, Napoleon's ideas spread throughout um, the, the country and, and Europe, and he puts each family on the throne of the nations he conquered. More citizens have the right to vote. He wrote something called the, um, the, the 
Napoleonic codes where he was able to, to, to calm down um, a, any sorts of revolutions. Um, elections were held in centralized government. Uh, he brought back French nationalism. You know, it's interesting because he's not even French, but he brought back French, uh, French nationalism. Um, pride in your country um, begins an all-out war on Russia, um, Austria, Britain, Persia um, to get more land for France. You know, at this time, this was a time that governments, um, world powers, were very interested in taking over um, other countries for their riches. You know, to rob them for plunder. You know, a, a booty. Booty was a word they used for uh, treasure. Now, why gold? You know, Haiti was the, uh, this is a the painting of Haiti, of a country, a plantation in Haiti. Um, what Sugar was white gold at the time. It was literally, you can look at it as um, cocaine of the time. You know, it's, it was um, heavily sought after. Um, people smuggled it, they, they grew it, people were enslaved for it. Uh, billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars were made with it. Um, sugar cane is usually, uh, you know, looks like this once it's chopped up and pretty. Um, and then you find sugar and this is a sugar loaf. Um, sugar loaf is when you, they compound all the sugar into a, a hard um, brick like that. And it's easier to transport, I guess. Um, I've never seen a sugar loaf in, in, in person. Um, but just you guys, uh, to, to, to let you know, as pretty as this sugar cane and, and, and sugar look, um, there were uh, lots of people died. You know, there were thousands of plantations um, of different kinds in, in Haiti. It was like when the night of the revolution started in 17, Haitian revolution started in 17, uh, 17, well, August 22nd, 1791, um, there's a ceremony. And uh, um, Carey Mark if I'm not mistaken, was the date of the ceremony in 1791. That same night, 180 plantations, sugar plantations were, were destroyed. Hundreds of white planters were killed. Um, 900 coffee plantations were also burned and destroyed. Um, this was a uh, total $2 million worth, 2 million francs worth of, of products were destroyed during this uh, revolution. Now, the money. One million people in France, as I mentioned, one million people in France um, made money directly from the, the, the sugar plantation or the agricultural goods. And think that I mean sugar, coffee, indigo, um, what else? There, there are quite a few things that are going on in think that I mean. Uh, mangoes, um, Napoleon Bonaparte sold Louisiana territory for 15 million francs. Um, that was a, a, a very, very, very big deal in 1803 when Napoleon, he had to sell the, 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 the territory in Louisiana in order to recuperate all the money they lost, or try to recuperate all the money that they lost from the, the Haitian Revolution. Um, and this greatly expanded the uh, U.S. territory. Um, as a matter of fact, you can say Haiti built the U.S. by this deal. Now, this made France are uh, very angry with Haiti, um, but this also made the U.S. on the, by this time, Thomas Jefferson, when, when John Adams was president, second president of the U.S., Thomas Jefferson um, hated the fact that he was doing business with um, Tucson, um, with, with the former slave, because to him, it's said a black president, a bad president. So um, Thomas Jefferson said himself that he wanted to put an embargo um, he wanted to put an embargo on, on St. Dominique and silence Tucson. And um, part of the reason why Haiti has been impoverished um, economically uh, today because of uh, policies like that. And some people believe those policies are still written, um, but not publicly known um, to continue to keep their necks on, on Haiti, which I truly believe has parts to do with the assassination of the president, Jovel Moise, um, no rest in peace. Now, uh, at the time, um, when, when, when Haiti was uh, 1767, there was 72 million pounds of sugar, uh, 2 million pounds of cotton being shipped to, to France. So this was a lot of money being lost after the Haitian Revolution. Uh, uh, moving along here. All right, back to, back to Napoleon. He was an expert in propaganda. Um, very good in, in when it comes to branding and marketing himself. Matter of fact, he branded himself the power, so to speak, because even when he lost 
the um, Battle of the Pharaohs in Egypt, you know, 1799. Even when he lost that battle, he made it look as if he won. <laughs> he sent letters to France as if he won. And when he get, got back to France, he became the emperor, um, which is a very, very interesting story. Um, just to add to his confidence in himself and his self-will and motivation and having to the, the ability, him and Tucson, General Tucson Louverture, they both um, had one thing in common that I like, that they seen a winner in the mirror. You know what I'm saying? They seen themselves as champions when they looked at in the mirror. And Napoleon had the resources to project that into the world. He spent a fortune on paintings. Um, moving along, he owned two newspapers, as a matter of fact, where he was able to control the narratives on what and how he wanted people to think. You know, um, I, I remember a quote that he said, he said, I found the crown of France in an alley and I picked it up. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so he literally crowned himself um, an emperor um, of, of France. I mean, <clears throat> now this is the a painting called Crossing the Alps. Um, very beautiful painting here. Um, there's actually five of them. The one you see in the middle, that's the one that um, that is behind me here uh, that, that you see. But the, the ones on, on the left and right are the original from David Louis Jacques. Now, Napoleon painted uh, paid um, Louis Jacques a, 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 a substantial amount of money um, for his paintings. There's another painting that you may uh, like to look up um, called The Coronation, where Toussaint, uh, not Toussaint, but Napoleon was able to, he paid uh, David Jacques Louis 20 million, um, 20,000 francs um, at the time to, to, to paint this. And this was, Coronation is a, a, is, is a painting regarding when, of, uh, Napoleon invited the Pope and his family and friends to watch the, the um, him get crowned by the Pope, but he invited the Pope, Pope Pius um, at the time, invited him, but, but tr tradition is, is to allow the Pope to, to crown you um, emperor. But, you know, he invited him so that he can crown himself in front of the Pope to show him that I don't need you. You know, that's, a, that's the type of cocky things that, that Napoleon did. You know, I'm going to show you that I don't need you, that I can do this. Um, um, for me, with or without you, um, which was a chess move. It was also a, a I believe, I would say he's a chess, Napoleon was a chess player, but mentally and the way he strategized, there's no doubt about it. He was a great strategist when it came to making power moves. As a matter of fact, there's a book called The 48 Laws of Power where he is highlighted um, for his boldness and confidence. Um, this general here and his boldness and confidence also came perhaps because he came across so much money, he wanted more of it. Um, a, a man who, his general called, well, this is a marshal, Pierre uh, Aigreau, he said, a man who, having sacrificed millions of victims of his cruel ambitions, has not known how to die like a soldier. And when he said this, he was obviously fired from, from being a marshal. Some quotes I would like to um, um, say here regarding um, both gentlemen. Um, Tucson said, I was born a slave, but nature gave me the soul of a free man, you know, very powerful. Another quote that um, Tucson was known to say was that our prosperity is based on the success of agriculture. You know, Tucson understood that in order for them to succeed, you know, once, you know, they had the freedom, he had complete control of St. Dominique. Um, the battles, as I mentioned, went from 1790 to uh, about 1801, 1802. And from then, he had to think about doing business, you know, and, and to be, believe it or not, um, based on my research and just, you know, how I feel spiritually, Tucson, General Tucson Lomachu was the greatest hero of all time. And, is, and I would challenge and debate anybody who want to challenge me on, on, on that. Any scholar, any historian, any time, any place. King Kevin Dover says so. He was the greatest hero and leader of all time. As a matter of fact, Marcus Garvey even said so. If I have time, I'm going to uh, read uh, a quote from Marcus Garvey's book, The Life and Lessons. Um, also, Napoleon said, until you spread your wings, you have no idea how far you can fly. And as Toussaint was uh, being arrested, once he got kidnapped and, uh, and arrested and put on a boat, um, which would be the last time he ever see, he would see Haiti or his wife and children, um, where they stole 1.25 million francs from his home, which is another reason why I believe he was a multi-millionaire because it was also suspected that he had 40 million francs um, in his possession. 
Um, you think about it, where Haiti is, there's going to be a lot of boats. Slave, this two songs, Jean Jacques Dessalines, and Henry Christophe, um, Suzanne Belair, and, and uh, you no know, regard, and um, Maurice, and all of these great soldiers, women and men, um, they were, they gained their power in the middle, in the height of slavery. Not when things calmed down. They didn't wait for the, the Constitution to be written by France or from Britain or whoever. They literally took their own freedom. And so by having control of the island, as a matter of fact, at one point in time, and I, and I want to believe by 1795, 1796, Tucson invaded um, um, Spanish, um, Spanish territory, which is the east side of the island. And so he literally had control of the entire, entire island at one point. That's, a, that's control of a lot of ships coming to the ports. So if money was coming in and coming out, best believe he's going to get a percentage of that for him and his soldiers in this country. So, and then he's doing business with um, Thomas uh, uh, John Adams um, in the U.S. and doing business with Britain. Matter of fact, France hated that. So trade was very important. Trade was very, and he knew that, you know, and, 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 and his intelligence, his bravery, um, you know, should not be overlooked. Uh, let me continue saying a couple more things here. The net worth I mentioned that Emperor Napoleon was making 25 million of francs, um, you know, as an emperor, you know, and, you know, he ruled, um, you know, pretty much Europe for about 10 years, man. So that was a pretty good accomplishment um, for him to be able to do that. Moving along here. Uh, General Tussauds inspired uh, insurrections all around the world. Um, it's, 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 it's a crime. It should be criminal that... <laughs> The children, no matter where you are in the world, are, that the lessons of and life of General Tucson during the history of, history of revolution is not mentioned. It's not in the curriculum of the school books. This is criminal. If any teachers or principals that hear what I'm saying right now, please make it your business to 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 let the children learn this because especially young black youth, you, young urban youth, when you know your identity, like I did, I used to get in trouble back in the day. That's all the story. But when you, once you know your identity, you are able to. Um, if you know where you come from, now you have an idea of where to go or, or how to move beyond where your ancestors left from behind. Because if you don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat, to repeat the failures. You understand? So Charles R. James, as I mentioned, the Black Jacob Benz, um, this is um, his book here, uh, published a play um, about General Tucson and his revolution, Frederick Douglass. Uh, Frederick Douglass is the great abolitionist, great, one of the greatest orators, possibly the best writers in the world, um, former enslaved African who literally fought he, the slave master to become free, gave a four-hour speech on General Tucson and his revolution. As a matter of fact, he lived in Haiti for two years. He lived in Haiti for two years um, <clears throat> because he was actually an ambassador um, to Haiti, and which was under the president Benjamin Harrison. All right, moving on here, let's see. Legacy, uh, Tucson played chess with greatest superpowers. Um, he was a real life Moses. Uh, I put, uh, in 1801, he wrote the constitution of St. Dominique. Um, everyone is free. Um, all men can work at all forms of employment, uh, was one of the articles. Um, there was no slaves on his territory. He's the first, you know, Tucson and Napoleon spoke a lot about um, equality, um, liberty and fraternity, which is brotherhood. They talked, you know, the United States talked about um, freedom and justice for all. They talked it. They wrote it. They talked it. Tucson lived it. He did it. And to me, he was a real life Moses. He, you know, he, he was really someone that um, should be look, looked into uh, a lot deeper than the, the quick whispers they give in schools. Um, you know, I mentioned his entire family was kidnapped. Um, he, he died in the dungeon. Um, in 1803, um, April 7th. Um, this is a picture of, of a statue they put of him um, in the in a dungeon. This is not even the dungeon that he was killed in. This is a dungeon in France called the um, Dubs La Clouse at Majeu. It's a castle that was built in the 8th, 11th century. And, and the picture to the right, you can see the prison bars, uh, you know, from the sunset, you know, once, once the sun hits the prison bars. But this is the, the one to the left um, shows you what the statue looks like. This is what they put in France of him. Um, but it, and Frederick Douglass, I'm, I'm skip that speech where he said, but you know what? No, 
let's say, let's say what the brother Frederick Douglass said. We should not forget that the freedom you and you and I enjoy today is largely due to the brave stand taken by the sons of Haiti 90 years ago, striking the, for the freedom. They struck for the freedom of every black man in the world, human greatness. He thought the world of, of, of Haiti. And matter of fact, Haiti was known as Freedom Land. You know, uh, Frederick Douglass would get ready to move in um, in 18... The Civil War started in 1862. That same year that the, 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 rev the revolution started and the Civil War started in America, you know, the, 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 the um, Confederates against the Union, uh, he was getting ready to move to Haiti. He was, he was packed, ready to go. Like, he loved Haiti. And it was too crazy and racist in America. He like, figured, man, hey, why not pack up and go? I, I've been there. I love it. I know the people, you know. Um, part of moving along the part of the legacy of Napoleon, he reinstated slavery in 1802. It was, it was actually um, abolished in. Freedom to and got brothers and sisters, black men and women here that are enslaved. You know, it, it did not make any sense. So, um, also terroristic, he left a legacy of terroristic strategies to exploit nations of their treasury and expensive art. Uh, France extorted Haiti, um, a crushing economic blow. The um, indemnity tax of 150 million francs, that was turned to 90 million francs, um, which was crippled Haiti's economy and, and the chance to grow. You know, this really destroyed Haiti's possibility. Um, at a very early age, first you take away the leader, then you then you take the, the 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 foundational money out of the country. How can the country grow and succeed like that? You know, um, so it created created a, a political upheaval that many countries suffer today, particularly in Haiti. But one day we shall overcome. Um, Napoleon supposedly blew off the noses um, at the Battle of the Pyramids in 1791, the, the noses of the Sphinx. Um, but there's no concrete evidence that he did that. But we do know that he, you know, the Sphinx, the, the, the statues in, in, in the pharaohs, uh, original pharaohs of, of Kemet, which is Egypt, they had big noses, which means they were black. So he, seeing that, him being a racist, he, blew, you know, the, the, the rumor or the history is that he blew it off. But I still have no proof of that. Now, this is what two, um, Napoleon was buried, buried at here. Originally, he was buried where he was um, exiled in. But they, um, in, 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 in St. Helena, which is South Atlantic Ocean, um, he was in exile um, for, you know, after he lost the Battle of Waterloo, which was a big battle he lost to, to, to Wellington, um, which was a British soldier. He lost, it was a very big war. Um, he was just outgunned, outmaneuvered. Um, but I still say that General Toussaint was the greatest soldier and strategist um, because, um, you know, it was too many things going on in France. I think they, they tried to overexert themselves in the world, like Alexander the Great, supposedly great, a lot of people don't think he's great anyway, but that's not the story. Um, but in you know, um, in conclusion, this you know is, is in France at less um, less in village. It's uh, it costs you twelve francs to come in here to, to see Napoleon's burial. Um, beautiful granite, um, you know, a red red quartzite um, and green granite base. Um, very beautiful place. It, uh, roughly about seven million people visit the place a place a year, so they make a lot of money off this. And Tucson deserves something very similar. Um, you know, in conclusion, both men were considered brave heroes in their country and are still venerated two centuries later. Um, Chief General Tucson Logan sure just so happens to be celebrated all over the world and not just you know in Haiti. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have for you today. I do have references here. Anyone who wants them, you're more than happy to have them. I'd love to answer any questions. Thank you so, so, so much for listening and uh, tuning in. All right. Um, thank you, Mr. Darvell. Okay, so, na so now it's uh, QA time. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. We already have a few that were written during the program themselves. So I'm going to start with these questions. All right. To refresh my memory, where did General Toussaint come from? Cap Haitian, which is the northern region of Haiti. The Cap Haitian, that's, it's in the, if you look at Haiti, it's on like kind of like the northern arm of it, basically. So it's kind right. of like, yeah. All right. Uh, okay, let's, uh, okay. Um, all right. Was Napoleon Bonaparte French or African? Um, I think there's kind of like, it was a bit of a screw up 
in these sort of oh N N Napoleon was actually he was a Corsican. Uh, he wasn't he wasn't neither. He was Corsican um, from the island uh, country called Corsica. Yeah, but a lot of people believe. Um, even oh my, I always thought he was from France. You know, and the way he died, he was like, you know, to bury me amongst the. Um, a river in France, he was like, bear me amongst the people of France, like, you know, so he was completely committed um, to France, so you can call him, he, he died, of, he, he didn't, well, he wasn't born a Frenchman, but he died one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, interesting because, you know, he identified as French, but not as Corsican, that's kind of, it's uh, always sort of an interesting thing that happens, and <laughs> when people, yep. you know, move around or adapt to other people's cultures. Okay, um, I think this is just a comment right here. Uh, just a comment. Yes. Every Haitian and black men all over the world should know how powerful our ancestors used to be. Thank you for so much for doing an excellent job in research. Thank you, appreciate that, thank you. Is that, uh, I definitely plan on writing a book in the near future regarding the Haitian Revolution or just about Tucson. I really think it's, a, it's criminal, as I mentioned, that he's not being taught more, um, a lot more than what people are learning about him, or if any at all. Right? No, he's he, he, he's 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 up there. Matter of fact, can I read something before the time is up? How much time we have? Um, um, not too much. Right. Uh, Go ahead. I, I, I was going to read something that uh, Marcus Garvey said. Um, and, and I and, and I thank you. With me, the, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to go down. All right. All right. <clears throat> he said that. So, John of Truth is worthy of the place of sainthood alongside Joan of Arc, Christmas addicts. And George William Gordon are entitled to the halo of martyrdom <clears throat> with no less glory than any other martyrs of any other race. General Toussaint Louverture, as a brilliant soldier and statesman, outshone that of Cromwell, Napoleon, and George Washington. Hence, he is entitled to the highest place of hero among men. So I just wanted to, to, to mention that. Um, so <laughs> I'm not the only one who feels that way, how, how high um, he should be revered. Okay. There's another question up here. Okay, um, where's Toussaint buried? That's a good question. Now, that leads to an another thing that I I've been trying to find out. No one really knows. When, 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 when Toussaint died, supposedly they threw his bones out there somewhere in the woods and um, complete desecrated his, his burial site because he was a general. He deserved to have a trial. They didn't give him a trial. They they put him in a dungeon, starved him to death up there, some 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 mountain in France, um, where he was freezing, um, barely had any food. He, he died of starvation and pneumonia, um, and so he doesn't have a actual burial site. And Napoleon Bonaparte made sure of that um, because he was embarrassed. He understood the history, and he knew that hundreds of years from now, or from that time in 1803, that the world would know that he was defeated by a black man, by an African army. You know, this was a huge embarrassment to him. So this is how he repaid him. Okay, uh, no, there's uh, another question about Corsica. Um, where is it at exactly? Corsica is outside of France. It's a small island. Um, you, you, you have to really take a look at it at, at a map. Um, but you will find it up there in Europe, near near Italy and, and France. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's on the, the south coast of France, to be exact. Um, so I'm right on the western side of the Mediterranean. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. This one has, a, has something to do with Haiti's like, current situation. In your opinion, what does Haiti need to do to improve its current economic situation? To be honest, Haiti has all the tools and resources to do that. Um, Northern Haiti, there's it's, it's, it's flooded with gold around the Cap Cap Haitian area. The south of near Port-au-Prince is flooded with oil. They found forty billion dollars worth of oil and gold around what 2011, 2012, um, after the earthquake, which is another story. I'm not going to mention the, um, um, the the theory behind this, but let's just say that earthquake 2010 was not man-made. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, you go to my my YouTube and, and see more about. The, my, my belief in what, what uh, President Chavez, Hugo Chavez, former president of Venezuela, um, said what happened. Um, but Haiti can easily, if they can get rid of the foreign powers, 
the, 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 the American government, the French government, the Canadian government, Asian government, German government, all these governments who has their hand in the cookie jar, the sugar jar, like France and Spain and, and, and Britain did back in the 1800s. If they can get, expose them first, get them out, um, change the constitution back to what General Toussaint did in 1801. And also Jean-Jacques Dessalines added to the constitution saying that um, no foreign, foreign entities can own land in Haiti because they didn't want people coming and owning land and taking over of Haiti because they, they fear slavery. Um, change that back. The U.S. changed the constitution between, I believe it was 1916, 1917, but they occupied Haiti 1915, 1934, and they changed the constitution, took 500 um, gold francs, uh, 500,000 from um, gold francs from uh, the, the Haitian bank. So if we can get rid of this from going on, um, Haiti can take control of the economy and put people that are educated in those positions of, of economy and justice, not just friends and associates, no more puppet presidents from the US. Strictly let the people vote for themselves like they did with John Patron Aristide, the first democratic president of Haiti, you know, and, and Haiti was doing they, doing pretty good. It was, on, they were, they was on the way up, but the way it is now, that's the only way it's gonna happen. They have to do for themselves. Get back to the agriculture. General Toussaint left the keys. Now we just gotta use them. Okay. Mr. Dorval, I think on that note, I think that's a really fantastic way to end today's session because I am with you 100%. We got a, I, we got an amen here in the chat. So, you know, I, I really do thank you so much um, for joining us. Um, there are some additional questions in the chat, so I will make sure to send out uh, Mr. Dorval's contact information so you can go and ask him directly. Um, but again, thank you all so much for joining us this evening. Um, Mr. Dorval, thank you so much for sharing your research and your contributions to the Haitian community and Haitian diaspora. And again, thank you so much, Ben, um, museum educator and grant writer for a, a very well done um, Q&A session. Uh, before we go, I do just want to make some quick announcements. Uh, Mr. Dorvell, like we've mentioned, um, heads a nonprofit organization called Courage to Believe International. And they are doing a fundraiser right now to help support the Rosette Pierre Creative Arts Center um, and Museum, their STEM youth program, which promotes the arts while simultaneously creating entrepreneurs. Um, they do not only just do work in Atlanta, but like we mentioned as well in Cap Haitian, um, in, which is in the northern part of Haiti. And if you're able and willing, uh, please donate what you can to help their cause. And I'll go ahead and put their link here in the chat in a second. Additionally, Hammock uh, ourselves, we are doing a fundraiser to send educational materials to the children of Kazal, Haiti, another northern region. Um, if you are in the Chicagoland area, please join us on Friday, August 13th at the Red Apple Restaurant. Um, you can find more information about that fundraiser happening on our website. And then lastly, something super fun that we're really excited about, the Hammock Boutique will be opening here very soon in the next couple of weeks. So keep an eye out on social media, on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more information. Again, thank you all so much for being with us this evening. Um, I'll be sending out a follow-up email with some additional information here soon. Have a wonderful weekend, and we really do look forward to having you at one of our programs in the future. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you, everyone.